What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the People of Packaging Podcast. I am your host, the Packaging Pastor, Adam Peak. You can find me on LinkedIn, Adam Peak, P E E K, or on TikTok at Packaging Pastor. And today I am joined by Laura Bata. She is with Bata Packaging all the way over in Milan. Italy. This podcast, if you haven't been able to see, is just like the packaging industry. It has gone totally global, and I'm here for all of it. Uh, Laura has been doing some incredible work around sustainable packaging uh, throughout the EU. The company was started by her grandmother in 1947. You can go learn more at bata.it. That is B-O-T-T-A. I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, some of the people who make this whole thing possible, Specrite. Go to specrite.com backslash PKG to learn more. That's S-P-E-C-R-I-G-H-T dot com backslash PKG. The supply chain crunch is here. And if you don't know your specs, if you don't know your data, then you are in trouble. Full stop. Get to know your data. Let your packaging speak the language of today, which is digital data. Go to specright.com backslash PKG to learn some more. All right, here's the episode with Laura Bata. All right, everyone. I am so excited for this. If you uh, if you can't tell from my voice, I'm smiling because we've already had a really fun pre-call here with uh, Lara Bada, not to be confused with Lara. Was it Lara Croft? Is that? Yes. <laughs> it's Angelina Jolie, right? Isn't that the actress? Yeah, not okay. bad. Not bad to be uh, close to Angelina Jolie, but it's just the name of that uh, uh, character, unfortunately. I, I will sometimes introduce myself and I'll say, yeah, my name's Adam, like the first guy. And uh, that, that <laughs> tends, to, tends to help. You, you got to have these like little, what are they, mnemonic yeah. devices to help people remember your name. So, yeah. uh, Laura, I'm excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you for joining all the way from, is, it's in Milan, Italy, right? That's where you're... It is. Yes, this is where we are. Very good. And... I've heard that this has nothing to do with what you're doing and who you are, but I've heard that the, is it the Lux Pack event? Is that in Italy? There's a European event, packaging event, but I want to say it's more in than Italy. one. Okay. There's more than one. Yes. There or maybe is the Cosmoprof. Lux Pack. Lux Pack. Okay. And there is Cosmoprof as well. Um, there's one in the Far East as well. There's Cosmoprof. And mm-hmm. uh, we've got the corrugated card with IPAC IMA. Uh, that's corrugated cardboard packaging too. And those are all this taking year. place in Italy? Yes. Oh, yes. all right. So here's the deal. If you are a person who makes decisions for these types of things and you want to, I don't know, fly my wife and I out to Italy so that I can speak at one of these events, I'm I'm your I'm at your service, uh Lux Pack, Cosmo Prof, or what was the other one that you just said? IPAC IMA. <laughs> IPAC IMA, yeah. All of them. We're yes. <laughs> My wife and I are we are we're travelers, and we'll we'll love to come out. And uh, my mom. We hope so. It's been a while since uh, I know traveling can, could happen. So hopefully, this uh, IPAC email is going to be uh, full of people again and international people. But definitely, yeah. definitely. There was a guy here in Utah actually that is uh, I I know through LinkedIn. He's a sales leader. Uh, not in the packaging industry, but he just posted how him and his wife and their son, his name's Mark A. Smith, uh, they packed up their, sold their house, packed up all their stuff and moved to Rome, Italy uh, for for many different reasons. But one of them was he just said he was just sick of the discourse in America just around culture and politics. And he said, I'm sure that there are, there are disagreements in Italy as well. I just want to understand the language and I can sit in a restaurant and eat in peace. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's wild. It made me laugh. Very well. Well, if the job uh, allows it, then uh, yeah. I guess Rome is a good place to stay. <laughs> yeah, I've never yeah. been. I've never been. I've heard it's great. Well, Laura, thank you for coming on the podcast here. I'm really excited to, to talk Thanks about for inviting your- me. Yeah, definitely. To talk about your family business, to talk about 
uh, your passion for sustainability? Uh, how did you get into decide to stay in the family business even? So uh, why don't you just give a quick introduction of who you are and we'll talk about how super rad your grandmother was too. <laughs> Okay, I'll start with myself. I um, actually started off in a completely different sector. So I was working for a pharmaceutical um, multinational company uh, in London and then in uh, Switzerland, then back in London. And 10 years into it, um, decided to come back home to Milan. And in between jobs, um, the family business was asking whether uh, I was ever going to come in and um, give a hand, lend a hand. Uh, so decided to try it out so that I could tell my dad, okay, I'll continue with pharmaceuticals. And, um, and I could say no, and it was going to be an informed decision. What were However, you doing in I fell in love. Were you doing, ah. sorry, real quickly, were you working in packaging in the pharmaceutical No, not space? at all. I was okay. um, analyzing side effects of drugs and then got into the uh, business side of things, right? optimizing processes within the pharmacovigilance sector. And that's how it kind of proceeded um, along the way. Uh, so nothing to do with packaging at all. Really so, you came back, it. so you came back to show your dad, hey, I told you, I told you I didn't yeah. want to do this. And, and, and exactly. then how, now here you are, you're on a packaging podcast. And then so. here I am. I never, I never looked back. I would just, uh, the difference between working in a multinational company and working in a small medium enterprise, a family business, like you could see things happening and, um, it was really fast and, uh, I got really passionate about it. And so like, so that I could actually give, uh, um, some innovation to the company, do things for it. And it really got, I really got excited from it and never looked back really. That's amazing. When you came back, what's your role now at Bada Packaging? Now I lead the sustainable packaging team and um, the innovations within Bata has have always been under my, uh, my real. Um, so this is a, uh, my business development, I guess, is uh, the appropriate name, business development and innovation. Got it. Got it. That's great. It, so the company you were mentioning before, is it's on yeah. it. Is this your third generation then? Yes, it okay. is. So, so you said Grandma it started in 1947 by your incredibly awesome grandmother. I won't pretend to know... It, and it was in Milan, is that correct? Or in Italy? It is. It is. So, yes. so in the 1940s in the U.S., I can only I can only imagine it would have been really difficult for a female to get into running a corrugated box manufacturing business. Is it? Yes. But I don't I know think anything Italy about. Italy would have been worse as well. <laughs> okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, the story uh, goes that. My grandma had four kids and they couldn't get by till the end of the month. They were both working uh, parents. Um, so my grandfather thought, okay, let's um, cut costs. And my grandmother said, no, let's try and earn more so that we can uh, keep the standard of living. And so she quit her job, decided to use her cellar and cut boxes and then she would go around Milan in tramways which is something a little bit like you have in San Francisco and try and sell them in uh, at businesses so that was uh, straight after the war I suppose and yeah nobody would have expected my grandma to do such thing and to manage actually to make it grow so um, I would have loved to meet her uh, but uh, yeah I just hope some of her DNA came through. <laughs> it did. It did. I'm pretty sure both genetically, physically, but also it, it sounds like that sort of same entrepreneurial spirit. So you're saying she would, uh, and this is, it's crazy timing. I was actually just talking with my wife. We were out for a walk the other day and I said, you know, I think there are people who are, who are savers and who are earners. And we were uh, honest to goodness having this conversation. And I said, <laughs> my, my propensity is to be an earner. Like when I hear of a problem in, in my own home where it's like, hey, we've got to we got to pay this bill. 
I'm not thinking, how do we cut back on all of our expenses, which is helpful, but I'm really looking at it like, well, how, how can I earn that money in, in, a, in a relatively efficient manner? So me and your grandmother would have gotten along great. We'll hang out in heaven. Her and I will be, I'm going to be in the hip hop room, by the way. So if she wants to come find me. <laughs> not sure hip hop was uh, in oh, no, no, I, her, her time but you can teach her surely she'll love it yeah she'll love it <laughs> so uh so the um so she just decided she's hand cutting and gluing boxes is that what she started off doing in her house yes and it wasn't corrugated at the time it was flat cardboard and um yes and who so, would she sell to she just went to the trolley station and just was like <laughs> I got boxes. You want some? And people are like, I guess so. Like, how did that? <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Um, what she she managed to like get into the business through uh, connections she had through her previous job. So uh, people who uh, needed to sell cardboard, then she knew who uh, wanted to buy, and then that led one thing led to the next, and so she was cutting boxes in her in her own cellar. Got it. Okay, so that's cool. And then at what point in time did it kind of, uh, so this was what, 1947. So was there ever a point where they said, okay, we've got something, we need to buy our first piece of equipment? Yes, they started the warehouse. So it was a small warehouse. And then um, my dad came into the company and then it became industrial, well, real industrial. Um, so that's when like the step up happened. Okay. Into, into manufacturing. Is it corrugated or was it like more of the corrugated. box? Okay. No, no, it was corrugated then. Okay. And yeah. you're still manufacturing corrugated today, correct? Yes. We still have uh, that as a core business um, the corrugated cardboard boxes. Um, so yeah, that first love is <laughs> still there. Did you grow up <laughs> as a kid in the plant? Do you have memories? Of uh, course. Uh, me and my brother imagine. would play hide and seek right. in the big stacks of uh, cardboard. Um, yeah, so they weren't very happy with us because our footprints would stay on the cardboard. Uh, but it was really good fun because you could like climb all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Really good hiding places. <laughs> no doubt. And even I'm thinking about what my kids do. They've started making these little miniature dollhouses out of paperboard box material and corrugated materials and molded fiber materials, just finding stuff around the house and cutting it, making these little tiny miniature things. And it's super fun. So I would imagine if you just had an unlimited, not unlimited, but if you had access to all of this paper, I got to believe uh -huh. you just, you could be super creative and stuff you'd make like on your, on, you can't, if you're listening to this, you can't see, but behind you've got like a family. It's like a box family behind you or something. Yes, it's um, um, characters made out of cardboard. And okay. there's four of them. So there's two parents and two kids. And That's great. Kind of reflects me, I suppose. Uh, my passion, cardboard, family, and the business. <laughs> That's so, amazing. And, yeah. and, and you, so you come in, come back from the pharmaceutical industry, just like, dad, I don't want to do this, but I'll, I'll try it out. Now you've kind of, found this passion for sustainability. Was that yes. something that you had developed during your time in the pharmaceutical world? Or is that? No, a newer... not at all, actually. Okay. Uh, this is definitely newer. I've been in the business now, what, 15 years. Um, so the idea was to con continue to innovate somehow. So we've always done corrugated cardboard boxes. Okay, what can we do to um, keep abreast and uh, make sure that you know businesses are there because they have to solve a, a problem and um, and the market. Uh, what can we do in addition? So we started looking at internationalization, open innovation, universities. So that's how we came across uh, various different uh, opportunities uh, within this sector. So we started looking at. Uh, the digital world, which is something that the business hadn't uh, approached as yet. Um, and so we said, okay, we have to know what's out there. We have to be out there and we can't just stick to what we've always done, which I think is something that the 
corrugated world is a mature sector and tends to do. This is what we know. Let's stick to what we know. We, we're probably a small, medium enterprise. We don't have the um, resources that big companies have. So the big companies, let them innovate and we do what we, what we, we know how to. So we wanted to get out of that um, mindset. So mm -hmm. there's re this book that I read a while back. It's called Frugal Innovation. I'm not sure whether you know about oh, it. I found it really, really interesting. Um, it's, um, it's a mindset and it really wants to show that innovation can happen anywhere. So you don't really need resources, uh, economic or uh, people resource. It's just a way of thinking outside the box, which for packaging people is really cool. Um, so it started off in developing countries where innovation still happens, but they don't have our infrastructure. They don't have right. uh, the internet access, electricity in many times, uh, but they still find really cool uh, products and uh, services that can help them with what they have. So do more with less is the, the quote from Frugal Innovation. And we thought to translate that into small and medium enterprises. And it's the same concept. You know, the, we have different uh, resources and infrastructures than big multinational companies, but that doesn't mean we need to stop there. We can uh, think outside the box and find new approaches to, um, to packaging. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I like that quote, too, because as it, as it pertains to sustainability, that's really the end goal is, is sustainable packaging should be able to do more with less that that is a sustainable approach to sustainable packaging innovation uh there there's this belief that i think is incorrect that somehow we'll, we'll be able to i don't want to say consume our way out of this but it's like we have this massively growing population it's it's an, it's crazy to think uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've, I've said this quote before in the podcast and I can't remember the exact data, but it's like, we went from like a uh, hundred thousand to a billion people or something like that over a hundred year time period. And then we went from a billion from like 1900 to 2000 from like a, from a billion people to 7 billion people. So the same 100 years where we went from whatever it was, we, we added 900 million people to the planet. Now we added 6 billion people in that next 100 years, and we're about to hit 10 billion people by 2050. It's like we're, we're not going to tell people, consumption is not going to go down. It's only going to keep increasing, which means packaging is, gonna, packaging is tethered to population growth. The importance of packaging is going to keep growing. So sustainability then becomes that idea of innovation, which is, we need to figure out ways for packaging to do more with less materials, with, uh, with, with light weighting certain things. Like We need to be able to reduce the amount of packaging materials, but increase the value of the product that it, that's coming up. So I love, that's, that's such a great quote. You said frugal innovations is the name of the book, right? Yes, yes. I love it. I love I it. Recommend it. Cool. So what, when, when it comes to, you said that you got into sustainable packaging. So I'm thinking in my head, there's a small to medium size corrugated box plant in Milan, Italy that says we need to, we need to look at beyond EU, beyond Italy, we need to get into sustainable packaging. So I understand that like practically, but just how did that actually manifest itself at at Bada Packaging, I mean, are you are you partnering with companies around the world to deliver solutions? Like, what 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 has been the manifestation of that belief that I'm sure is okay. ever evolving? Right. Yes, um, I I start from maybe the beginning. So it it didn't we didn't just say today we start doing sustainability. It, it was kind of a process. Uh, so we got into the e-commerce world. We wanted to do something. Um, like a little bit more innovative than just producing boxes, keeping them in our storage and selling them again. So we decided to make a platform economy out of it and use boxes that were available in various warehouses. What that meant was uh, partnering with other suppliers. So the idea is the customer wants their 
dimension and they want it now. Um, so if you have to have all the dimensions, you have to stock them all. That yeah. means producing a lot more, keeping them in stock, and that's not really sustainable. Right. And so a lot of waste. To, and a lot of waste as well. So that kind of clicked. So it was more of a, okay, the idea and trying to optimize the idea and the optimization leads to sustainability in the end. So what, what else we wanted to do? We made a, a palette calculator. So we decided to play around with the uh, maths and algorithms until we found a way to um, provide an algorithm to optimize how you stack your boxes on mm. the palette. The idea is empty space is a big issue. It's a billion dollar issue. Everybody's trying to... Um, to, to solve it. And in our small um, way, we, we say, okay, let's give this software um, to customers to play with so that they know and they can try and optimize their palette. What optimizing their palette means you optimize uh, how you stack them. So the warehouse space, which has a cost, uh, the amount of trips, and the amount of trips leads to a decrease in uh, pollution. So right. In the end, it's always the sustainability that comes up. And we Has knew that... all the research had said that customers are now, or have been since a few years now, uh, ready to change the brand if the packaging does not reflect the message that the corporation at a high level gives out. And the customers don't really, uh, our cu customers don't really know that. So we try to say, okay, hold on, you need to, pay attention to these statistics. So how can we help you um, is trying to um, get to know, um, tell you and let you know that these things are happening and how can we help you? There's various ways we do that, not only in the packaging, but trying and uh, yeah. get you accustomed to all these di different possibilities you have to improve. Is that software then today given just the complexity of the supply chain today, I know that there, there is a lot of importance being placed on maximizing truckload or, or train loads or container loads or whatever it is. Not, not just like this is the, the, the non-sexy part of sustainability because it's the stuff that it's really hard to capture in a marketing tool, but it is, it's, it's less wasteful and it's, it's, it's better for the profitability for the brand as well. If, if you're going to make your pallet load more efficient, has that, do you still have that software and is that a growing part of your business? It, it's free on our website, actually. We have a, a, oh. a simplified version. So uh, big corporations can actually get the full blast uh, software uh, from software houses that they do this for a living, but it's not our job really. It's just uh, something that we can right. provide and why not? And the idea is people get accustomed to it and uh, play, can play with it before they actually go and decide to buy their own tool and have everything sorted uh, oh, okay. uh, with algorithms. So, so you don't sell that software. No. You just developed it. Okay, got it. No. And, and so no. there's like, uh, who is it? Like Tops, uh, I know is a, is a palletization software. So somebody would kind of play around with it on your site and go, oh man, this is really great. Can it do all its other stuff? And you go, no, it's not really our thing, but here's some of the people you can go talk to and then they go on their way. That's what a way to serve the community. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. We actually got oh. asked if uh, they, uh, they uh, we would sell the algorithm. It's like, it's actually free on our website. <laughs> you don't need to buy anything. <laughs> I love it. And, and so you develop this and you're giving back to the community. And then what was maybe the next, has there been a next evolution in, your yes. what what you do in sustainable packaging um apart from the sustainable packaging that is <laughs> yeah, yeah we we also provided uh, this is a new thing that we've uh, recently launched so it's um a simplified lca calculator again lca is a really deep and scientific uh, method of analyzing packaging and all sorts of products. Uh, but we decided to make something basic so that people can get accustomed. It's a little bit of education and how uh, different materials can affect your choices in packaging, but 
in any really in any product you decide to produce or launch or anything yeah. um so we decided to make something simple so that people could uh try it out and uh kind of have fun with it before actually and um, getting into a real scientific um, research that I would like to do on LCA. So okay. this is something else with it. Um, is that also free it, on your website? Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's yes. Great. No, what we do is sustainable packaging. So what we try and do is give um, innovative packaging for any kind of solution that the customer may require. So it's either off the shelf products that are quite original. So we have our uh, echo sleeve, for example, this is a paper sleeve, uh, which is on has uh, flutes in a way that it makes the paper elastic. Um, and it's just like a glove fits a bottle or any kind of small glass for beauty and um, wine or anything uh, and that's made of paper so the alternative would be uh, plastic or any other product um, so what's the difference and we try and give some kind of uh, numerical value to what the savings are in terms of co2 what the benefits are and we try and get some uh, in italy you have certifications for paper recyclability so we try and obtain uh, certifications to um put the money where your mouth is kind yeah. of thing so try and um make sure that what we say ha is backed up with evidence and people can make the right choice that they feel so That's this awesome. between um the various different um packaging that in which tend to be paper based that we offer um there's we've managed to reach a stage where we got various recognitions so not only um us saying it but uh some third entity so in italy it would be conai which is our uh, um institution for recycl paper recyclability who has um recognized as experts of sustainable packaging we have uh, got technovisionary awards um packaging excellence awards so the idea is to try and uh, make sure that what we do gives benefit and uh, apart from having off the shelf this has uh, given rise to consultancy so brands mm. come to us because of this expertise and say okay this is the brief we have this issue help us solve it because it's not always easy it's not always an right. off the shelf product that will will solve the problem because of machinery they have the material cannot go in any machinery uh supply chain issues logistics uh, so you have to understand why the customer wants to change is it uh to look good or is it because they want some footprint di difference um so how scientific do you want it what the uh does it need to what quantities they have so all these issues need to be taken care of and um that's where we come in um great that's awesome. One of the uh, biggest mediatic um, case studies I can tell you about is um, the paper padded envelopes. Uh, usually padded envelopes have plastic within and paper outside. Um, and the brief was, uh, in this case, a big supermarket chain in Italy um, for their deliveries, uh, online deliveries. Uh, within the big bag, they would have maybe bottles and uh, soy sauce or anything more fragile eggs uh, that would go in um, bubble wrap. And of course, this wasn't liked by the customers, wasn't like wasn't in line with their um, corporate uh, communication. Mm -hmm. So they needed something else. So after months of trials of different products and different materials, we reached uh, corrugated paper padded envelopes, which mm. protects the... Um, the products and can still be recycled in paper. So um, that had a huge mediatic uh, um, resonance. So not only in Italy, but across the world. So we were like, whoa. That's amazing. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that a case study? I mean, I'm guessing if you have free micro LCAs, if you have free palletization software, can they also go see these case studies on your website as well? Yes, yes, of course. That's great. We have, um, a news page. So I'll just have. ask the question that everybody is hoping to know. Laura, what is your website? So we can go get Ooh. all this cool stuff. It's www. 
B O T T A. So B for bottom. Uh-huh. <laughs> dot <laughs> IT. B O T T A dot IT. I'm guessing dot IT is for is Italy. Is that the? Yes, it's Italy. Proudly Got- made in Italy. <laughs> proudly, proudly made in Italy. Well, Laura, this has been an awesome uh, conversation. I love how much, honestly, that you and and Bata are just giving back to the to the sustainable packaging community. I think it's wonderful. Um, I I believe in the power of reciprocity, and and I'm sure that that's something that you are experiencing today. Which is when you give then you also receive. And so I hope that there has been a tremendous amount of blessings for you to be able to hire people and solve problems and give good jobs and yeah. help, help your customers out and help reduce carbon impacts and all sorts of, all sorts of these goals that it sounds like you're, you're already doing in, in the packaging industry. I think it's really wonderful. I want to encourage everyone to go to bada.it, B is in bottom. <laughs> B O T T A dot I T, <laughs> as Laura just said. Uh, so go go check that out, Laura. Anything else uh, you'd want to add here? It's been it's been an awesome time, and like always, these these things, these interviews just fly by for me. So uh, anything uh, else? Thanks, like to add here? Uh, anyone can reach me on LinkedIn, Lara Botta, B for bottom always. Um, so any questions, I'm happy to help and give back. Of course, um, that's something I. I really appreciate it. You're right. Are you going to introduce people to Angelina Jolie when they reach out to you? Or is that you still don't know her? Well, I'm not sure. Okay. They okay. need to be worth it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not just going to, she's your best friend, no. but you don't. Of you course. Don't yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, if you're in the EU, uh, for sure, uh, get a hold of Laura. If you're if you're not in the EU, for sure, get a hold of Laura. Get a hold of uh, Laura. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I and I hope one day to be able to head over there. I've never been to Italy. I've been to oh, let's see, uh, I've been to London, France, Germany, Austria, but I've never been to Italy. So we'll, let's make that happen. Yes, two packaging nerds together. Can't wait. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, we'll we'll try to bring Greg Bentley down too. He's uh, he's up in the UK, and uh, maybe some other people will have like an EU packaging nerd meetup or something. It'll be it'll be glorious. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, Laura. Thanks so much for coming on, everyone. Remember, go check out bada.it uh, and see all the great work they're doing there. Thanks again, Laura. Thank you so much. Hey, that wraps up another edition of the People of Packaging podcast. It would mean so much if you would like and share, rate, review, subscribe, because we want to change the world because we believe that packaging is awesome.